A secure Google Cloud project is a happy Google Cloud project, and a big part of maintaining that security is securing your service accounts. Remember, access to resources can be granted to service accounts in the same way that they can be granted to users. And not only are they designed to be used by applications and virtual machines, they can be accessed by other users too. That means that a service account that's set up with access to too many resources and that's accessible by too many users introduces a serious vulnerability. So in this episode, we'll talk about what's what with securing your service account's roles and permissions. When thinking about securely managing service accounts, you could start by asking two questions. What resources can your service accounts access? And what permissions do your service accounts need? For example, let's take this service account with the editor role assigned. What resources can this service account access? Well, with the editor role, the answer is pretty much all of them. Okay, so what permissions does this service account need? The answer to that will depend on what you need the service account to do and it's likely to be a lot less than the permissions associated with the editor role. This means that you'll have to adjust the project's IAM policy to delegate the appropriate IAM roles and permissions. When you do that, it's best to adhere to the principle of least privilege. That means assigning to your service account the minimum access required for it to carry out its intended function. Any account with permissions beyond what it needs introduces an unwanted security risk. So steer clear of assigning broad roles to your service account, like owner or editor, especially in a production environment. This is true even for default service accounts that are created for you with the editor role assigned right off the bat. Yeah, it's useful for development, but make sure to narrow things down when turning things up for production. Applying the principle of least privilege also means limiting which users have access to your service accounts. Access to your service accounts can mean different things since there are a number of predefined IAM roles that will grant users permissions over your service accounts in different ways. Let's talk about some of these service account related roles that might impact your project security. First up, we have the create service account and delete service account roles. They allow users to do exactly what the names say, create new service accounts and delete existing service accounts, respectively. It's worth noting that the create role on its own doesn't let you do anything beyond creating a new service account. You'll need to be granted additional permissions to make changes to its roles or to manage its IAM policy. Likewise, the delete role does not include the permissions to undelete, disable, or enable, only delete service accounts. Up next is a service account user role. With this role, users are allowed to act as a service account to run certain operations. For example, a user that has the permission to create compute instances, cloud functions, or app engine apps will need the service account user role assigned so that they can attach a service account to any of those resources. Next, there's service account admin. A user of this role can do all administrative tasks on service accounts, enable them, disable them, delete them, and update their details. They can even make changes to the service account IAM policies so a user of this role can delegate access to service accounts to other users. For that reason, the service account admin role is very powerful and should be delegated very carefully, if at all. Another administrative role for service accounts is the service account key admin role. Users of this role will be able to create and delete service account private keys. These keys can be used by other users to run commands as a corresponding service account. As you can probably guess, this can become problematic, especially if you have a boatload of keys floating around without an effective way of tracking them or managing their distribution. This is another role that you'll want to delegate very carefully. And finally, there is the service account token creator. With this role, a user is able to use the impersonate service account flag to run gcloud commands as a specified service account. Now this kind of impersonation doesn't require the use of any private keys and is considered a safer alternative. The service account token creator role also lets users create OAuth2 access tokens, sign blobs, or generate self-signed JSON web tokens. The service account user, admin, key admin, and token creator roles I mentioned could be granted to any account by adding the binding to a project's IAM policy. But watch out. By granting them on a project's policy, it will grant those permissions on every service account that exists on that project. Now this likely goes against the principle of least privilege and is generally not a great idea. Instead, you can avoid 
over delegating access to service accounts by editing individual service account IAM policies. Service accounts aren't just accounts. They're also considered resources with an attached IAM policy. By binding users to these roles on individual service accounts, you will decrease the likelihood that a user will make an accidental change and substantially decrease the blast radius if a user account is ever compromised. Do your best to grant users access only to the service accounts that they actually need. It's also worth noting that yes, service accounts can be granted these roles on other service accounts. So take into account instances where a user can have indirect access to a service account through another service account. You can see a service account's IAM policy with gcloud IAM service accounts get IAM policy, followed by a service account. By understanding the roles associated with service accounts and by doing a thorough review of your IAM policies to apply the principle of least privilege, you'll be taking major steps towards maintaining a safe and secure project. But that's not all. Even after you've done that, there's still more you need to know about securing your service accounts. Next time, we'll spend some time talking about securely impersonating service accounts and effectively managing their private keys. See you there.